Hi, this is the Planning for Retirement presentation put on by the Division of Human Resource Management with Utah GovOps and the ERIC. Today, we're going to be talking about quite a few things. We're going to go over who to contact when you're ready to retire. We'll talk about your eligibility for retirement from URS retirement dates, leave payouts, contribution limits to your 401k or 457 plans, sick leave benefits, timing, January retirements, leave calculators, and post-retirement reemployment. So three months before your last day, please contact URS URS is the one that would determine if you are eligible to retire. They can also help you with the purchase of future service credit with them. They are the ones that handle your 401k and 457 retirement savings plans. So they can give you information on those. And then they also issue your monthly pension benefit or your pension check. And then also they have rules about post-retirement reemployment that you'll wanna consider if you're considering going back to work after you retire. Next, you'll wanna contact us here at the ERIC. We handle your leave payouts, such as like your annual or your excess leave. We also handle your sick leave benefits. So if you have any pre-06 or pre-2014 sick leave, we'll help you with that. And then we help you with your final paycheck and how you would like that paid out to you we can help you do a deferral into your 401k or 457 account if you would choose to. Third, you'll want to reach out to PEHP. They have post-retirement medical plans that you could look into. They also have optional dental and vision plans as well as Medicare supplement plans. And then they are the ones that handle your health reimbursement account, so the HRA account that you would receive if you have program two sick leave, like the pre-2014. Fourth, you can reach out to Social Security or Medicare if you're going to be age 65 or if you're already age 65 or older. You'll want to enroll in Medicare parts A and B. And then you'll also want to stop your HSA contributions if you're on a high deductible plan like the STAR plan. Medicare has certain rules regarding um, HSA contributions. So you could reach out to Medicare and they could let you know when you'd want to stop those contributions. And then uh, lastly, don't forget to notify your supervisor and or your HR field office. So now we're going to talk about eligibility with URS on a tier one retirement plan. So you would be considered to be on a tier one retirement plan if you were hired before July 1st of 2011. So on the state employee non-contributory plan, which is a very common plan, a lot of us are on that one um, with tier one, um, you are eligible to retire at age 65 with at least four years of service, age 62 with at least 10 years of service, age 60 with at least 20 years of service, any age with at least 25 years of service, and any age with at least 30 years of service. Now the three in the middle there, the age 62 with 10, age 60 with 20, and any age with 25, they are all subject to an early age reduction to your pension payment. So you would want to contact URS for details on that. And then if you are in a tier one retirement plan in the public safety non-contributory fund, then you are eligible to retire at age 65 with at least four years of service, age 60 with at least 10 years of service, or any age with at least 20 years of service. Okay, so with URS eligibility for a tier two plan, that would mean you are a new hire on or after July 1st of 2011. There's two options with the tier two plans. There's the public employee hybrid plan, 
which combines a pension and a 401k. And then there's the defined contribution plan, which is the 401k only plan. So on the public employee hybrid, you would be eligible to retire at age 65 with at least four years of service, age 62 with at least 10 years of service, age 60 with at least 20 years of service, or any age with at least 35 years of service. Then notice the two in the middle there, age 62 with 10 or age 60 with 20. They have the red asterisks next to them. They're both subject to an early age reduction to your pension amount, so you'd want to contact URS for details on that. And then if you have chosen the defined contribution plan, the 401k only plan, you would be eligible to retire after four years of eligible employment. And what this means is the employer's contributions into your 401k would be considered vested after four years of eligible employment. So those contributions would be yours to keep at that point. And then on the public safety hybrid plan for a tier two, which combines the pension and the 401k, you're eligible to retire at age 65 with at least four years of service, age 62 with at least 10 years of service, age 60 with at least 20 years of service, or any age with at least 25 years of service. And those two in the middle, age 62 with 10 and age 60 with 20, are both subject to an early age reduction. And then if you've chosen the 401k plan, the defined contribution plan, as a public safety employee, you'd be eligible to retire at any age with four years of eligible, empl eligible employment. And that would mean those contributions from the employer would be vested and be yours to keep. URS retirement dates. URS has two retirement dates that you can choose per month and it's based upon your last day of work. So if you have your last day of work any day between the 1st and the 15th of the month, then your URS retirement date would be the 16th of that month. And then if you have your last day of work between the 16th and the end of the month, your URS retirement date would be the 1st of the following month. So those are the only two days that URS uses for retirement dates, the 16th or the 1st. Now, if you had your last day of work, for example, on Wednesday the 11th, you would have a 16th of the month retirement date with URS. You wouldn't enter any leave past the 11th. That would be the last day that you would enter time on your timesheet. And your... Um, your leave accrual, like your annual or your holiday leave, would be based upon how many hours you have entered for the pay period. So annual and holiday accrual is based on, is prorated based on the hours in your pay period posted. Um, the only exception to um, posting leave after your last day of work would be if you had been approved for leave. So, you know, if you are on FMLA or if you'd been approved for administrative leave then that is one of the times that you could post leave after your last day of work. But usually um, that's not the case and people just post work on their last day of work and then they don't post any time after that. Um, just need to reiterate that your last day of work and your retirement date um, are two different days. They can't be the same day. And then this little at the bottom here just goes over that you can't use leave after your last day of work. So with leave payouts, um, we will pay out your annual, your excess, and your comp leave to you when you retire. Um, if you're in an FLSA exempt position, then your comp time will be use or lose. But if you're in an FLSA non-exempt position, then your comp time will be paid out to you. If you're not sure of your FLSA um, status, you can always call the ERIC and we'll let you know. So with these leave payouts, you can have them cashed out on your final paycheck. Um, they will be federally withheld at a flat rate for taxes similar to a bonus. Or you could defer some or most of your final paycheck into your 401k or 457 to help reduce taxes. IRS contribution limits for your 401k and 457 plans. 
So any given year, there is an employee limit for the contribution into these plans, but there is also a higher combined limit with the, between the employee and the employer. So why we bring this up is we want to let you know that if you've already um, hit your 401k limit, for instance, in a given year, you don't need to worry about the 25% from the Program 1 and Program 2 sick leave. That employer contribution that will go into your 401k won't affect your employee limit because there's a combined limit between employee and employer. And then another note, which kind of goes on the other side of this, um, has to do with our end of year retirements, like a January retirement. Um, so that last line here on the slide says, if your gross earnings for the calendar year are less than the IRS contribution limit, then the employee and employer combined contribution cannot exceed your gross earnings. So basically what it's saying is if you um, had a last day of work in December, let's say, and let's say you only got one paycheck paid out to you in January of that next year, all of your income from that paycheck would now be considered your IRS contribution limit for that year because in most cases that that amount, your gross earnings on the way in one paycheck would be less than the current IRS contribution limit for a 401k. So that comes into play with our January retirements um, and in helping you maximize your sick leave benefit from your program one and program two sick leave. And I will talk about that further on one of the slides, um, a few slides ahead. Okay, with your program one sick leave, which is your pre-06 sick, and your pre-06 converted sick leave, that's how it's listed on your leave balances if you look those up, 25% of those leave balances will automatically go into your 401k as an employer contribution. They are calculated at your hourly rate, and if you don't have a 401k, one will be open for you. And then the remaining 75% of those hours will be used to buy continued months of medical coverage. So eight hours will pay for the state's premium for one month of coverage. The employee will still be responsible to pay their portion of the premium and the coverage will continue on your current coverage plan and dental and vision are not included with that paid up medical. Um, if the employee is under age 65, then the eight hours will cover everyone on their plan if the employee is age 65 and over, then dependents are no longer covered and the eight hours will purchase a Medicare supplement plan for the employee only, and they would need to use an additional eight hours to continue coverage for their spouse. Um, if you are older than your spouse and you'd like to use the continued months of coverage just on your spouse alone to get them up to age 65, that's totally fine. You don't have to use it on yourself. You can just use it on a spouse or vice versa. And then if you don't need your months of continued medical coverage from your program one sick leave, you can transfer those hours, so your program one sick leave hours into your program two sick leave hours, and then the benefit could be used towards the health reimbursement account instead. But if you wanna do this, you have to transfer all the hours. You can't just transfer part of them. So it's all or nothing. With your program to sick leave, this is your pre-2014 sick leave and your converted sick leave. That's how it's listed on your leave balances. 25% of those hours will automatically go into your 401k as an employer contribution. It will go in at your hourly rate, and if you don't have a 401k, one will be open for you. Then the remaining 75% of those hours will be contributed into a health reimbursement account for you, an HRA. So these hours will either go in at your hourly rate or the retiree's average wage from the previous year, whichever is higher. Um, you'll be sent a healthcare MasterCard from PEHP 
to be able to access these funds with. And you can use the HRA to pay for any qualified medical, dental, vision expenses. You can even use the HRA to purchase insurance premiums, um, as well as pay for Medicare Parts B and D. And then any unused balance will carry over to the next year. So timing for retirement is definitely an individual thing. Everyone's needs are different. Um, some of you would like to maximize your 401k contributions that year. Others will would like to maximize their um, sick leave benefits, like their paid up months of medical coverage or their health reimbursement account. Um, you need to decide uh, when is right for you. We are always um, happy to help you though at the ERIC. Give us a call. We can talk about you know, retirement dates, talk about your sick leave benefits, and see what we can do to help you with your decision. Now I'm going to talk to you about January retirements or end of year retirement. Um, with this time of year, Sometimes you're able to maximize your program one and your program two sick leave benefits. And I will show you how we do this. So you would need to have your last day of work in pay period 25 or pay period 26. And what happens is both of those pay periods pay out in January of the new calendar year. So the earnings that pay out to you and your leave payouts that pay out to you um, come to you in January. And at that point, you will only have had that one or two paychecks. And so your gross income would be lower than it would be other times of the year. And since it's lower than the current um, 401k limit, like for the year, if your gross income is lower than that, then your gross income for the year now becomes your new 401k contribution limit. So if you can defer most of your um, gross income and those paychecks that come to you in January into your 401k, then you may be able to retain more of your program one and program two sick leave to be used towards the health reimbursement account and the paid up months of medical coverage. So the sequence of the money going into your 401k, first the employee is able to contribute and then second, the 25% from your program two sick leave will go in and then third, it will be the 25% from your program one sick leave. So if you contribute most of your gross income from those one or two paychecks into your 401k, there's not a lot of room left to get you up to that contribution limit, which is the same as your gross income at that point. So second, you know, the 25% goes in from your pre-14. Sometimes that fills it up and you don't use any of the 25% from your pre-06 and you're able to use all of your pre-06 hours towards the paid up months of medical coverage. So this is a great way to go. If you're interested in this, please give the Eric a call and request a retirement estimate from us, letting us know that you wanted to maximize your program two and your program one sick leave benefits, and we can help put together an estimate for you and see um, how that would work with the hours that you have. Now we're going to talk about two calculators, one on the employee gateway and one on URS's website. Okay, this is a picture of the ERIC retirement calculator. How you can access this is you would go to the employee gateway website at gateway.utah.gov. And then um, in the search bar, you can type in Eric Retirement Calculator and it will pull this up for you. It is a document that you have to click on and download onto your computer, similar to like an Excel document. And then once you get it pulled up, you can fill in your information. So it's asking you for your program one sick leave hours, program two sick leave hours, your annual leave, your comp leave, your excess leave, your hourly pay rate, so after you put in all that information, it will calculate for you how many months of health insurance you could receive, 
from your program one sick leave, um, how much money would go into the health reimbursement account from your program two sick leave, how much money will go into your 401k um, from that 25% of both those sick leaves as the employer contribution, and then the amount that your the cash value of your annual comp and excess leave hours. Um, so this is a great tool for you. I mean, if you're wanting to see what this would look like with a um, like end of year retirement, trying to maximize your benefit um, from your pre-06 sick leave or your pre-2014 sick leave, then you'll definitely want to give the Eric a call and ask us to do a retirement estimate for you trying to maximize that benefit. And then we can put that together for you and you'll be able to see what that looks like. This is a picture of the URS pension calculator that's on their website. You would go to urs.org and log into your account, and then you would click on calculators in the header area, then click on retirement planning calculators, then click on retirement benefit estimate calculator. This is where you would fill in your information that it's asking for, and it will populate um, a pension benefit amount for you as well as the partial lump sum option for a 12 month or 24 month if you're on the tier one retirement plan. It's a pretty cool calculator. I've enjoyed playing with it myself. I would definitely um, suggest that you check it out. Okay, so let's say you've retired and you've done all the things you've ever wanted to do as a retired person and you're ready to go back to work. URS has some rules that apply to going back to work for an employer that's under the URS umbrella. So this would apply to state employment, county employment, school district employment, um, some universities, you know, anyone that uses URS as their provider for a retirement benefit. So if you go back to work within 60 days from when you retired, then your retirement benefit will cancel, so your pension will cancel, and you'll return to active status. If you wait for 60 days, but go back to work within one year, then your retirement benefit can continue if you don't receive any employer provided benefits, such as medical, dental, vacation, sick time. And then your salary will also be limited and you would need to check with URS for those yearly limits. If you can wait a whole year from when you retired with URS and then go back to work with a URS uh, employer, then you would no longer have these restrictions. You could earn a salary and choose to either continue to receive your retirement benefit, so your pension, or you can cancel your retirement benefit and start to accrue additional service credit. You would need to be reemployed for at least two years for URS to calculate a separate benefit for the new service and salary, and then they can combine it with your original retirement benefit. Thanks so much for watching our presentation today. We appreciate your time. If you have any further questions, please contact the Eric at 801-957-9390. Have a great day.